Hello, I'm Susan Feller, the curator of the traveling exhibit, Stories Are Made Loop by Loop. And today we're going to hear the, we're going to meet um, Karen Miller from Ottawa and hear her story. Uh, Karen, would you share the screen and go through some of your process for us, please? Yes, for sure. Are you seeing that? Not quite yet there. Okay. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for having me here, Susan, just to start. Um, yeah, so I wanted to talk a little bit today about um, what I like to focus on in my art, which is uh, my motherhood journey. So I have some pieces that I'll show that deal with that. I've been dealing with this subject um, art-wise probably for the last four or five years. Um, so this is one of my earlier pieces from when I first started to explore um, motherhood through my work. And this was, uh, it's called Life in a Bubble. And it was inspired by uh, a reflection actually of my son and I in a bubble in a puddle uh, on a winter's day. So it was kind of frozen. And I, I, my eye caught the reflection. And so I took a picture and um, sort of the statement that I usually put with this piece is that it um, really reflected to me when I saw that um, shadow um, or reflection, um, sort of the situation in my life at that time. So um, he was about four years old, so very young, and uh, we spent all our time together. I was at home with him. And, um, but that would be changing, you know, come fall, I knew that he would be starting school. So it was going to change the dynamic. So sort of that push and pull of knowing that it was going to change and feeling sad about that, but the bittersweet, um, also knowing that it would be nice to get some time to myself and, and not have, uh, you know, someone with me constantly, um, asking questions and, and needing from me, it was nice to be able to have that sort of, um, you know, change in my life. So that's kind of what uh, inspired this piece. And that's a theme that would recur in a lot of my work. Um, I'm trying to find how that, there we go. Um, the next piece is, um, it's the second piece from a series that I did um, called Motherhood Still Lifes. So this was piece number two. And the motherhood still life was kind of inspired by the same concepts of dealing with motherhood and um, sort of that, um, I call it sort of the duality of feelings, like the feelings of, you know, loving to be a mother, loving your children, but also wanting to make space for yourself. How do you make space for yourself within that? And that um, doing so doesn't mean you don't, you don't love your children or you love them any less. It just means you need space for you um, so that you can find your, your own identity in this whole new journey. So this series was kind of inspired by a lot of the old masters artwork um, where they would do still lifes but what was missing from those still lifes was well, where was the female experience but where specifically was the mother experience like there was no evidence of children or you know the the mother that was keeping everything tidy and, and making the nice arrangements of flowers so this particular piece was sort of capturing what my still lifes look like um, especially when my children were young, you know, there would be toys everywhere. There would be no pristine, you know, countertop, no, you know, the, the flowers would be, you know, ragged and pulled apart. There'd be Lego on the table. So um, kind of capturing that angle that I felt was missing um, from art and from art history, we tend to overlook um, the motherhood experience. And a lot of times actually, um, mother artists have had to hide the fact that they were mothers because it's been very um, seen as like they're not compatible you can't be an artist and a mother so I was sort of trying to deal with all that sort of um, historical context and insert my own voice into it another piece I wanted to show that's another one that's in that same series um, so this was motherhood still life number three and the same sort of concept as in number two, um, I call this nude study because it's a pile of um, naked Barbie dolls. Um, and they were just on the counter. My daughter used to wash them and, and leave them you know, all over the place. And so you'd come into the bathroom and find this <laughs> strange pile of naked dolls. And again, it was just sort of that concept of, um, you know, inserting the motherhood 
um, reality into, you know, still lifes. This is the, this is the reality of motherhood and sort of giving that a visual presence within um, art canon. Um, as this piece has been out in the world, I, I made it in 2020, finished it in 2020. Um, I've come to see different things in it too. Like sometimes I, I, I see sort of um, the feeling I think that a lot of women have of just sort of, um, you know, being exhausted or overexposed or in the motherhood context, like touched out or you're always sort of being touched and, and needed. And so I think I see a lot of um, different stories in this piece now than when I first created it. And other people, other mothers, when they see it, they see their own story in it. So I think that's something that's really interesting about art is that it can really inspire other um, angles or things that I didn't think about originally, but that have come out since. So I really, I really enjoy that. Um, then I'll move to this one. Um, it's called Ripple Effect, and it's from 2021. Um, this one was sort of getting um, beyond the still life series and getting more into um, just direct, like the feelings that you have when you become a mother and that feeling that I mentioned before of like loss of identity. So I kind of wanted to use text because I think text can be really powerful um, in an artwork. And so um, this was my son when he was first born. And to capture that feeling of like when the doctor holds up the baby, that's your whole life changes. Arguably it changes even before that, like, you know, when you're pregnant or even before you're, you're pregnant, but like at that moment, it's like absolute change. And you don't even really recognize all the nuances of the change that are coming until it and hits you. So I had just put different um, aspects of my own life that changed. And I think for every mother, you know, it's a different, that could be a different story, but this is my story. So just, you know, um, independence and time, identity, goals, everything changes and has to sort of morph and you have to sort of find yourself again. And so I really like the idea of um, the background being sort of distorted, like it's, you know, in water and it's, it's, um, the words are sort of getting distorted as those aspects of my own life change, changed. Um, so I wanted to capture that in this piece, sort of those that feeling of, of everything changing and you have to find yourself again. And then I have, I think just one more. <laughs> um, this is a theme that I have, I don't know what it is about this theme that has stuck with me, um, but this is um, crust. So every day I have to make my son his lunch and um, for a long time and it seems to go back and forth sometimes he'll eat his crusts and sometimes he'll bring them home and I'll open up his lunch and there's the crusts and um I was sort of struck at some point with these crusts going out and the labor that I'm doing um and then they come back and just then I have to dispose of the crusts and just it made me think about all the invisible labor that a mother or that I do as a mother um so I started accumulating the crusts I'd put them in the freezer in the, in the bag um, and then I piled them up and I, and I took a photo and that's what inspired this piece. So that's just a sampling. There was many more <laughs> crusts that would come back. Um, a sampling of that, um, concept of the invisible labor that I do. So I called it 187 school lunches because I calculated that in one school year, um, that's how many lunches I would make for him you know, factoring in PA days and holidays and weekends and, <laughs> and all that. Um, and I just felt like it was a really good visual of, um, you know, work that I do that goes unrecognized, but has to happen every day. Like you, you're doing it to keep your children, you know, alive and fed and, and happy and, and comforted. Um, and so this is a theme that for whatever reason, it really resonates with me. So I've done some other work with it, like prints, um, done some lino cut prints of the sandwich crust theme. Um, I plan to revisit it again in some textile work. And uh, it's just one that keeps coming back to me for whatever, whatever reason. Um, so that's the the pieces that I had prepared to talk today about. Should I uns I'll stop share or did you want to keep them up? No, that's good. Stop. Okay. Okay. 
as I've done with every other um, artist, I've taken some notes so that I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like to encourage everyone to look at these videos again and and um, so that they're not fresh. You're thinking of different points. Um, in stories are made loop by loop, we specifically chose different pieces. And in your case, it's seven different wonderful shadowed silhouettes of um, family members. Sometimes it's you and one child, two child, all four of you with your husband. Um, and, and we just in those seven get to see a little bit of that family growth, which is interesting. Um, and, and I believe you have almost three dozen of them, certainly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, um, they're small eight by eights. So they're, they're little snapshots, which is uh, a wonderful way to put them together. Uh, in the exhibit itself, um, you mentioned that when your work is exhibited, other people have their own stories that they're reacting to. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, when we put the exhibit up, we, we describe the, uh, it's not just your name and, and the title, but it's more about your artist statement about the piece. But I encourage people to look at the artwork first, think about it. Does it resonate to you for a particular story? How can you um, identify with it? And many of them are abstracts. So, you know, you're just responding to color or shapes or something. Um, in in your talk, you also talk, spoke of a few more media. And I think that's interesting also that um, in your art path, you are definitely exploring, which is really, really fun. So we would not label you specifically a rug hooker um, or working with loops. Uh, so what has that experience been for you? Um, you know, just starting out and, and, you know, being not knowing the tools or the me mediums at all and, and being a beginner again. Yeah, it's funny you should say that because I think it was just today that I actually, I was just um, editing my Instagram bio and I took off textile artists because I thought that's really limiting at this point. Like I'm doing so much more than that. So yeah, it's interesting to go back to being a beginner. <laughs> um, and I feel like I'm starting to get to the point now where I feel like I'm not, you know, intermediate, but I'm getting past beginner in terms of painting and, and other things. But then there's other things where I do feel like very much like a beginner again, like with the lino cuts, because I've only done a few. Um, but it's it's really interesting. I think it's good for us to do that, because I think I know for myself, like I felt very, um, like I only identified as a textile artist. And so mm -hmm. I felt very, not afraid, but like reticent to try something else because I'm like, well, what if that doesn't work out or if that's not as good as the level to which I've gotten in previous work? And that can be really limiting. I think it's good to, to stretch and to try new things. I think that really, and I think that helps you in the textile work as well. I think you take what you've learned from the growth in other materials and you bring that back to the textile work too so I think if you start to pigeonhole yourself too much then it's you're sort of like cheating yourself of the opportunity to to grow so yeah and there's something just really good about um feeling like a beginner and feeling like you're not sure what you're doing I think that's where growth happens so yeah it's interesting that you that you bring that up <laughs> And I'm, I'm going to ask people, I'm going to put one more slide at the end of this video for everyone to know exactly how to follow you, um, but definitely explore your Instagram profile. Um, there's more to it. And, and a lot of the process, I, I brought up the, you know, hesitancy with the new techniques because we saw that you, you said, all right, this is it. And I, and I got everything and laid it all out and you start working on it. Um, but they'll also be able to see your installation pieces or your assemblies. I guess that's a better word to me. Mm -hmm. I remember that refrigerator and how many yeah. lunches are you having to put together for two children over there? Yeah. I think it was over 3000 over like the entire school year. Yeah. I forgot that that motif uh, reappeared in that mm -hmm. context too. So uh, yeah, it's interesting how some concepts um, stick and and we sort of like are regenerated. And I think that um, all of these ideas are, are 
what I'm revisiting now in I've returned to school and I'm doing a master's in contemporary art theory right now. And I'm writing papers and working towards a major research paper that are dealing with all of these same issues, concepts of home and invisible labor and the motherhood experience. So it's interesting to go at, to, at it from that angle as well and to see um, the ideas that are coming from it in an academic context that will then come into my art work. So mm -hmm. it's it's interesting how all these themes come out in different materials, different methods, different approaches, writing versus um, art making. So yeah, it's all it's a full, full circle. And I think that makes it well-rounded. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and one other thing I want to plug is your book, books. Yeah. Yes. Um, but uh, the one that grew out of this motherhood um, experience and just, you know, asking for others to, or searching online and, and in your relationships with so many others to relate and submit their work, not just um, rug hooking. So I think that's a, also a very helpful um, text to, for people to be seeing, all of mm -hmm. which can be found on your website and, um, and follow along on Instagram. Well, thank you very much, Karen. It's always thank a you. pleasure. You know, you. zooming at least, and certainly <laughs> being in in place every once in a while. Yes, for sure. Thank you.